with all that said and done, here are all the parts. Let's put it together and see how this kit looks. We begin with the legs. Thrust apart on this side. Lift this up. Stick it in there. And then stick this one here. Right shoulder arm connects to the right arm. Goes in like that. Get the left shoulder here. Snap into place like so. Like that. And then holding it here, pushing it in until it snaps into place, like that, holding it there, pushing it in, and then it snaps into place like so, oh, no I didn't, so let's just do it again, it feels like it went in, yeah it did, alright, and then we have the backpack, goes. The head. There it goes. And then the body. There we go. And there you have it. The 1-100 scale Master Grade GM Command Black Ops Unit is now complete. What do you think of that? Alright, so here's a close-up of the kit. came out pretty good. I kind of like how this came out now. I, I thought maybe it was gonna, I was going to ruin it, but it actually came out alright. Um, the scribing came out alright. Just I think I should have sanded it down a little bit more to smooth out the edges. Um, I wish I could have scribed this, but I wasn't ready for those yet. Put a little detail on the arms, as you could see there. Um, painting of the the ch of the chest came out with co good with copper with the copper um, background. Head came out pretty good. Just unfortunately, that visor broke. I did glue it together, but yeah, what do you gotta do? There's the back part, the thrusters, and the vent. Pretty much a nice added touch to it. Good detail there. And there's the scribing that I did, which at first I was actually going to mask this off and then paint it all the way around to conform with this, but then I said no, not to do it. Some of the paint, as you can see here, has peeled and chipped off because of the tape, and that was my fault. That was my fault. And another thing is, I'm missing a part. <laughs> I lost the heel. The heel armor. And I have no idea where it is. But, from here, it looks absolutely great. What do you think of that? This came out pretty good. Overall, I mean, it's overall look really nice. 
I was actually kind of thinking that maybe the chest would have been a little bit better if it was maybe maybe a centimeter wider so it looks a little broader but I guess because of how generic it's supposed to be in the battlefield it, the last thing you want is to be a much more bigger mobile suit to be picked you know to be seen from a distance and uh, be a perfect target maybe uh, that's what the beauty of this kid is supposed to be now um, hold on, this thing came off let's put the shield on this is going to be nice and difficult aren't you going to be difficult for me? yes it is, there we go so the shield's on and now the rifle now as I mentioned uh, before in the previous video when I removed the tape uh, a lot of sticky residue was stuck on that and I was trying to figure out how to remove it uh, water doesn't work and if you're gonna start rubbing your finger on it you might as well rip the, the paint off but a little cotton swab dipped in th uh, enamel thinner was perfect it didn't ruin the paint and it removed the stickiness off of this, so it's all right. Now let's remove this. Let's put this. It's going to be a tough one, and you got to do it from the hand connected because removing this hand from the actual part itself is going to be from from the from the from here is a chore on its own. Alright, so I gotta find the the alignment here. There we go. Then bring that up. Yep, it came out good. Alright, so then I'll just reposition it again. There you have it. My custom FAMAS is now complete. What happened there? Oh, a little paint got on it. Shoot. <sighs> yeah. Well, that's done. That is done. But we're not done completely. Now we're going to put on the custom armored parts that I made for this kit. So. First up is the shoulders. That goes there. You know, I'm just I just thought of something right now, and I'm going to probably regret it, but I'm doing it anyway. All right, put let's open this up a bit. Put that in there. the arms a bit because I'm not sure there we go actually let me deal with the back one the back side first take this off Came out per that actually went on easy before it usually is like flapping about. Now the leg parts. 
And to tell you the truth, I didn't mark it which one is both right and left, so... I'll have to remove some tape. Yeah. One of these are specific to the other because I was custom making it and one did not stick. I think this one goes on the other side. So Top. Yeah, this one was for this. Now this one. I guess I forgot to do this, but I have to do it. I'm gonna take the head off. Bring this down here. And bring that here. And there you go. Let me pose it a bit. GM command is complete. Interesting concept idea that I thought about that um, during this build. Of course, I wasn't expecting it was going to take this long, and despite my best efforts, this could have been done better. Really, truly could have been done better. So, even though it really is nice, I really like how it came out. I, I'm, I'm not sold on a, some on something like this. This could um, the whole concept of the plate armor was, of course, uh, thinking. Okay, um, we all remember the plated armor on the you know on the um, on the Alex. Where it, it was an idea where the armor would, com would completely encase the um, mobile suit, and of course, purged after it's been after its use. Now, federations could have continued on in experimentations like this to see if they can put it on uh, any other type of mobile suits. But there's also a cost issue, where you know what's going to be costly to manufacture these armored uh, plating and putting on mobile suits you know, uh, the, on grunt mobile suits that may or may not see action, and even though this is a mobile, uh, you know, they probably don't want to put it on every GM um, unit out there, but they could have easily began testing it on on a less or known or lesser use mobile suit during, during the, um, during, during its lifespan, so they probably use this smaller plated version of the armor as a test bed to see okay let, instead of covering the entire body let's cover certain areas that will be easily protected and then if ha if we have to we'll purge it so that was not my idea of something like this where the parts would easily be purged during the, during combat to you know if it, if it takes a hit or two and then obviously it's flapping about you know purge the entire thing or purge it to increase mobility I mean 
even though this is not the armored parts are not hindering this mobile suit it is actually maybe constricting it a little bit in certain areas um, then of course when need be pop it out then then you have more freedom of motion in, during battle so that's why the design I, I, this this came out fine this one I wish I could have done a little bit more this one I'm sorry to say it's horrendous and, and poorly designed because I, sh I, I didn't take into account how the curvature of the leg is designed and I should have done it where the plate is in one area and then the plate is in the other and like I could have easily taken two plot plate parts and glued it together to in an angle to contour with the leg um, that and then put plates down here I didn't put plates on the th on the calf armor and somebody pointed it out part of that is because of mobility I could have used I could have done the side one but then you have the thrusters that are being blocked so maybe that was not not a good idea to do that and of course putting it inwards it's going to be you know for those of you who wear tight jeans and you know you can start rubbing between the legs it's not it's, it's no fun and with a, a mobile suit moving you know moving around in, in the battlefield that's not fun either or you know you're gonna give ma the maintenance guy a pain in the ass so that was my idea concept with this armor plating setup and um, giving it an extra detail there to to give it a little bit more uh, personality and of course customizing the rifle because I've always was a big fan of this rifle of, of the um, of what well, in the original um, high grades when I built it I, I always loved that gun and I was saying to myself okay it, it would look great if it was a if it was a little bit more extended out and um, given that you know that little uh, thing that somebody wrote down on my, my recent video and I forgot what it called but still this is this came out nice very nice so this has this has been a learning process for me in customization uh, and actually this is actually my first ever master grade customization I've done customizations on high grades on, a, on an RE kit on, on the no grade kit which is of course the Valerifon but this one to do it on a master grade because I've seen a lot of people doing, doing the same thing on master grades you know, it, it 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 came out okay, but I wish it could have been a little bit better in certain areas, and maybe because I, with work, and certain situations that I cannot disclose, kind of like drag me down a bit. And now that things have calmed down a bit, I'm able to focus a little bit more. But this kit took a little longer than normal, and I well, then again, I couldn't, I can't say it should have taken a little longer than normal because even though I'm used to building a master grade in two, maybe th maybe three weeks, but not a month, um, the situation, of course, merited this. Now, I did comment that I did wanted to put a little um, grip here, but you know what? It looks good the way it is for now. Oh, and I did th think of putting in a grip, not a grip, more of a handle on on this on its on its on its angle because I was kind of maybe somebody may point this out and I'm gonna beat you to the punch when you're when you're removing a, a clip from a gun obviously from here in this angle the arm is the left arm is gonna swing over and grab the clip and then that's it now obviously to grab the clip and then turn it around because you have to understand this is not in the same position I pop this out so I have to flip it to be this to be here because if I put it here it's gonna bash into the armor if it decides to, to focus so the intention was to put a um, um, kind of like a handle there where the the left arm would grab it and then flip it around and then clamp it onto the uh, to the to the uh, gun and then of course cock the cock it that was the, my intention but I, I decided not to do that because I think maybe um, that would not look good on it I should have done it but no I'm leave it the way it is so there's my ideas didn't put an antenna I'm sorry 
don't think maybe you know what leave it the way it is a little streamline there a little vents on this top the copper thing idea was came out pretty good and and of course looking at the thrusters right there nice so there you go it is done it is done with this kit I am done with this kit I need a break for a moment before I begin with other stuff but I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, I know many people may, may may not find your you know this your cup of tea but I will say this this is a great kit on its own well designed well thought out and it's a great canvas for any other custom ideas that you guys have in mind if you're planning to get this and it's a great kit to build so far I have built two GM kits um, which is of course the GM Sniper Custom and this and Bandai has really 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 did a good job on making such great master grade high grade uh, master grade GM kits and I can't wait to build other GMs that I may get my hands on even the classic ones but this one's great for a canvas to build off on so I would highly recommend that you guys get this I really do especially from Gundam Planet because they got a whole stock over there. So I'd like to thank you guys all for watching. I hope everyone has a great holiday. And stay tuned for more Gundam models yet to come. You guys all have a great day.